Hi there and welcome to today's vlog and today I want to talk to something that is really really important not only in the Christian life but in life in general and that's the gift of encouragement. I mentioned before that I've started doing uh, the park run, uh, our local park run. Now park run is something that happens all over the UK and I think abroad in some places too and uh, so people meet in parks up and down the country on a Saturday morning, nine o'clock, and uh, go on a run, or you can walk if you like, of 5K. And uh, since I started uh, doing the Couch to 5K program and did that, I thought, well, let's give it the park run a go. And I've done three so far. Um, not easy, but en kind of enjoyable especially when you finish. My time's coming down slowly, bit by bit. I know I want to tell you about uh, an incident from the last one I did last Saturday. And uh, it's interesting that as you're running, you're running along uh, and you find people overtaking you, or occasionally, in my case, you might overtake somebody. Um, sometimes the person going past you, you think, how are they running faster than me? They don't look as though they could be able to run uh, all that quick but anyway you can never tell and the point I'm coming to and you might say get on with it <laughs> is that uh, I found myself running behind I think about the second lap of the the, the, uh, the park um, a, a woman and her young daughter and that's I would estimate the daughter probably be 10 or, or, or probably, no, probably younger a bit younger than that maybe eight or so or even younger I don't know but uh, the mum was uh, kind of encouraging her, her daughter on the run. And uh, you could tell that sometimes the daughter was flagging. She wanted to, to stop or slow down. And mum was saying, come on, come on. Occasionally mum would, would get hold of the little girl's hand and, and help her along. And uh, the little girl kept going. And I thought, well, I'll just follow them for a little while. And, uh, and then as I got closer to the finishing line, Mum said, come on, we're nearly there now. Let's let's just give it a bit of a sprint. And so they set off quicker and I tried to uh, speed up too. I did a little bit, but they crossed the line before me. And it was, I, I was just uh, thinking about the, the great example that that mum was of encouraging a little girl. A little girl wouldn't have, maybe not, not wouldn't have even completed the course or certainly wouldn't have got around in that time unless her mum had been there. Sometimes her mum was quite... Uh, strong with her encouragement and you thought the little girl wants to, to, to quit or slow down but she kept on saying come on come on we can do it and it was a great example of uh, encouragement and uh, that reminded me of uh, a couple of weeks earlier when it was one of our granddaughter's sports days we went along and uh, we sat near a, a, a mum whose uh, son was in a particular race and the mum was shouting real encouragement and and even when, when he'd finished and he didn't win, but she's saying, you're brilliant, you're the best, you're amazing, I love you so much. And you can just imagine what that did to that little lad, that, that, that boost to his self-confidence. And uh, his mum was so proud of him, even though he might not have finished first. I was talking not long ago to uh, a long-time, long-standing friend of mine who many years ago, and felt God calling him to the to the ministry of a local or lay preacher within the Methodist Church, and uh, this guy was um, quite from a working class background, a bit rough around the edges. A great guy, but uh, probably not the typical um, local preacher of his day. But and, and so, as he was going through the training and, and the process of becoming fully accredited as a local preacher it was quite tough and there was opposition and some people didn't like that he's quite forthright uh, he calls a spade a spade and uh, some people didn't like that were put off by it so he faced a lot of criticism and he was come to the point where he was almost ready to quit say i'm not going to do this anymore and an elderly lady from the, from the church who, who was herself quite prim and proper in, in many ways rung him up and, and she knew he'd been discouraged and she says john i want to encourage you and so if you like you're preaching in our church this sunday i will sing a solo as part of your service and uh, as a way that i can support you and encourage you and uh, 
he accepted the offer and, and the service went really well. And people were moved to tears by that solo that she uh, brought to the service as part of the worship. Uh, and uh, so that was a, a way that you, a young man, almost ready to quit, uh, was encouraged. And I know that in my own uh, situation, my own story, when I was training to be a local lay preacher, I faced a lot of opposition and, and was ready. I wrote to the superintendent minister, who's the lead minister in 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 what's called the circuit in Methodism, a local group of churches. And I said, look, if people don't want me to preach, I'll, I'll give it up. And he wrote back and he said, look, I want to encourage you to press on. Keep going. Don't give up. And uh, perhaps if he hadn't have written that letter or encouraged me, I would have given up all those years ago. So the reality is that in our words, in our relationship with people, we have a choice. We can either be a, a discourager, bring people down and, and, and really harm their forward movement, or we can be an encourager, give them, put courage into them. Um, I, I'm drawn to a verse in the letter to the Hebrews in the New Testament, Hebrews 10, 24, which says this, let us consider how we may spare one another on to love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, but encouraging one another. Spare one another on to love and good deeds. And, and when people say, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian, in, in, in a sense, it, you could say that. But if we're not meeting with other Christians, how can we be there to encourage them when they're struggling? Um, we just can't do it if we're not meeting together. We have to if we can at all, uh, meet together to encourage one another, to be there for one another, to support one another. St. Paul writes to the, to the Thessalonians, uh, chapter 5, verse 11, in the first, his first letter, encourage one another, build each other up. So uh, I think that the ministry of encouragement is, is something we can all do if we put our mind to it. And it's one of the greatest and important, most important gifts within the life of the church and indeed within our families, with our friendships, our work colleagues. If we can be an encourager, that means such a lot. And you know as well as I do that we all need encouragement from time to time. So there's uh, the challenge for this week. Uh, set your mind to be an encourager. And to those who encourage you, tell them how much you appreciate it. Thank you so much, as always, for listening today. And God bless you. Have a great week.